Hey Google, play some music. Good morning and welcome to the very first episode of the Google Stadia show. My name is Donnie Reese. If you don't know me, uh, I record a lot of podcasts with my friends on the internet at a place called the PSVG Podcast Network, where we talk about all kinds of things, like video games and board games, and we have a DLC show, and, and there's just a bunch of them. Um, but I wanted to start this Google Stadia show because Google just basically launched what could be a transformational, just huge industry-defining moment in video games. Could be has the potential to be obviously um over there in psvg land i don't know anybody else that owns a chromebook so i had to go out to the internet and find a companion to take this journey with me so without further ado jared would you tell everybody the things you do hey how's it going um my name is jared gaucher i my involvement in the gaming podcast space is Mostly design work. I make a lot of intros for various YouTubers, uh, profile images, banners, whatever. I'm trying to take all the work from Adam, but you know, <laughs> we have friendly competition. Um, as far as Google is concerned, I have been using Android since the Motorola Droid on Verizon back when like it first kind of got popular. Um, I love Google. They're probably my favorite company outside of Nintendo. And I give them all of my data because the services they give me are worth it. I'm right there with you. Um, I I have I, I buy Chromebooks like all the time. It's like a running joke of my army of Chromebooks in PSU <laughs> because every time I find like a new one, they're they're so cheap. <laughs> yeah, I just go grab another one. Um, so yeah, so I was really excited to see this Google News, and I wanted not only did I want to find someone like you to talk about it with, but I also wanted, I, I thought like doing a show like this could be a big deal. We'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. We'll see where this goes, but I thought a show like this could be a big deal. Um, we have no idea, you know, how this is going to take off, uh, but I have to admit, I'm very excited. Yeah, me too. I think this is so far everything, every field, or or product that Google has come out with so far has impressed me and I've been able to find use for it when I think the first time Google got into the just the um, entertainment industry with the Chromecast it was kind of a huge deal in that you could go to a store and spend you know $35 on this device that plugs into your TV and now you've got full control of all your video straight to your TV yep. so hopefully they can do the same with video games. So let's talk about that. Last week, Google was at GDC 19, the, the games developers conference. And, and before we even break down the, the, the announcement, because they did unveil and introduce us to Google Stadia for the first time. But I feel like it, it, it's worth mentioning that it was at the games developers conference. This wasn't at E3. It wasn't like an industry show. They did have a live stream, so I'm not trying to omit them from trying to impress us. They definitely tried. But mm -hmm. they were there soliciting support from de from developers. That That's what they were there for. That was the, the, the very crux of the idea, was to get some developer support. So at GDC, they took the stage. They had tweeted about it for like three weeks. Hey, come, come see us at GDC. Uh, we'll show you the future. And we were introduced to Google Stadia. That's the name of the show. Google Stadia. How do you feel about that? Stadia. Um, as far as a, as a name, it's, it's interesting. It's, I mean, it's, I wasn't like blown away by it, but I'm kind of at the point where I just, I kind of really don't care what things are called <laughs> just because eventually it just sort of grows on you no matter what it is. You know, we dealt with the Wii and the Wii we U. We do have the Wii and the Wii U. The and Xbox. the Xbox One, you know, <laughs> and the iPhone 11, you know, it's it's just, you kind of get used to uh, naming conventions. Um, I understand what they were going for, though, in terms of Stadia being the plural 
the correct plural version of stadium and, you know, the original spectator sports. So uh, I can see where they were going. It's, it's not the best name, but it's going to grow on us like everything else does. I do think I do think that products that are good typically find a way, no matter what, what mm-hmm. the names are called. And yeah, the whole stadium play. You know, Google owns YouTube. And obviously this 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 reveal, this announcement is is almost built around that that concept. Yeah. Of not only are you playing the games, you know, in the stadium, in the Coliseum, but you're also watching others do it as well. So that's kind of like their their little hook. Um very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, they they understand that that's kind of at this point in the gaming industry that's sort of the biggest uh, money maker is streams and let's plays and people just joining in on somebody else playing a game. Definitely. Um, all right, Google Stadia. It's not a box. It's a platform. Mm-hmm. It's a streaming platform, just like Project Stream, which we saw last year. They announced that it'll come out this year. It'll be available on all devices. So if your device runs Chrome, or if you have a Chromecast, or if you have a PC, it'll run across all of them. Um, it has a brand new controller. It, it's very much a video gamer's controller. You know, we, we don't have like any, any new crazy thing that we have to adapt to. I, I think video games have basic, basically settled on a controller. Like whether you mm-hmm. move the stick around or whatnot, you know, that's like minor. Like we all basically have what four trigger buttons, four face buttons, two sticks, a D pad. They're all basically yeah. the same. Um, Google's controller has a share button, which shout out to Sony. Seems like every controller from here until forever will probably have a share button. That's a big deal. And uh, Google's controller also has the Google Assistant button, which is pretty neat. You can click that and actually. Hey Google, how do I how do I beat this dungeon? And it'll <laughs> pull up a, a YouTube player with you. One, uh, uh, I just wanted to bring up one thing that I found really interesting is for years Google has been working on context aware um, voice requests with Google Assistant, and I thought it was interesting that when they the example that they showed within Tomb Raider was not, Hey Google, how do I defeat? this dungeon in Tomb Raider, blah, blah, blah. They just said, how do I beat this dungeon? And it knew what game they were playing, yep. what dungeon they were in, and could immediately give them results. So if that's something that they can actually live up to, like they have with regular voice commands, that's pretty interesting, pretty neat. Because that's a lot of data to filter through. Yeah, it's a whole machine learning, right? That stack environment, yeah. like everything, all the AI. Like we already mentioned, a built-in integration to YouTube. Um, they talked about... You know, making their own games. They announced Stadia Games and Entertainment Studios, headed up by Jade Raymond. And uh, we saw some folks there. We saw, um, most notably, we saw Doom and Assassin's Creed playable. We saw NBA. I believe they had, like, some logos for Skyrim and Rockstar. Like, they had some some other third-party logos that were just up on the wall. But that was kind of the pitch. Um, so let's go ahead and just break it down. Streaming. There's no there's no box. There's no console. You don't pay five hundred dollars to gain access to it. You just stream it on your phone, on your mm-hmm. TV. You know they they said that they that at launch, which will launch this year, they said it will support 1080p video, 60 frames a second. Obviously, dependent on your internet connection. But um, this is this is new. Now we've had streaming before, right? Uh, I'm sure. Um, Twitter has, has brought this this company back from the dead this week in uh, in every negative tweet is we had on live, All right? They tried <laughs> to do it. They they tried to do it ten years ago. Um, we have uh, what is it? Uh, Shadow, and mm-hmm. we've got PlayStation Now. Obviously, the formerly known as Gaikai, and uh, so it's not streaming is not new. This has yeah. been something that the industry has been chasing for a while now, and we know that Project X Cloud is coming. Um, from Microsoft. This just feels different. One, because it's Google. And we're talking about one of the most, you know, technically powerful companies in the world, if not the. I mean, these people yeah. basically own the internet at this point. They own YouTube. They own, they basically own your email. Like, they they, they funnel most of the traffic. They're very mm-hmm. capable of doing something like this. So it feels, whereas, you know, Gaikai is a big deal. You know, I don't want it to mean that. I don't want that, want it to sound like it's not you know, successful, because I think it is. Yeah. But Google could take it to a whole new level. You're talking about onboarding people and, and, and really, you know, 
providing us something that works. I don't think we've ever had a player as capable as Google. Yeah, Gaikai, which is PlayStation Now, right, you mentioned earlier. I've I had PlayStation Now for a little bit and I wasn't super impressed by it. It was um not the greatest, probably because the last time I was trying to use it was on just a regular PlayStation 4, which couldn't connect to 5 gigahertz <laughs> Wi-Fi. And there would be a lot of weird artifacting, and the music would get all weird and distorted, and a lot of input lag. And so it was kind of difficult. But I think a big difference between that and what Google is trying to do is Google is not really building anything from the ground up. They're building stuff on top of their giant neural network interface that basically powers everything that they do. And uh, that's really interesting and something that they're bringing to the table that I think literally nobody else can at this point, not even Microsoft with their their xCloud. Uh, they don't have the infrastructure that Google has. And not to say that they can't, but they just currently they don't unless they come out with some bombshell later in the year and say, hey, look, we've we've got our own neural network. But I think that's a big game changer because it's not just it's not just artificial intelligence and just some random assistant. It's it's literally computing that learns what's best for the platform and how to direct um, the way it uses the power, the way it uses the internet to constantly improve, which I find very interesting. And when they were talking about the platform being able to grow and improve over time, not just by... Um, not just in terms of being able to upgrade the hardware in their data centers, but literally the software being able to grow yeah, uh, by itself, really. Yep, it's going gonna, it's gonna to know internet traffic, and it's going to see, you know, it's going to be load testing, it's going to see spikes, and yeah, it's going to, you know, it's just like, you know, RDPing into any any server or any, like, load balance system. Like, it's going to, but, mm-hmm. but that times, you know, at times infinity. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the demonstration... As we keep talking about, you know, what they showed us, they showed us at one point Phil Harrison, former Xbox PlayStation exec, who was leading up Google Stadia. You know, they showed us picking up a game on his Chromebook and then moving, you know, to a PC, moving to a Chromecast, moving to a phone and picking up the state on every one of them in real time. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that switch concept of play anywhere you want play on the go play from anything, but really the anything part, that's the hard part, right? Is the anything yeah. part. You're not <laughs> dependent on a specific piece of hardware or branded hardware or, you know, yeah. something that has to be certain amount of, you know, powerful to run the client. Um, I mean, it's in the cloud. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, as long as you've got the controller with you, you can, um, uh sign into any device that you have available and play it. It's not dependent on the hardware as long as you've got the internet connection. And at you know at at this point in where we are with technology, you're either dependent on internet or you're dependent on your hardware. So I mean at least internet is a lot more readily available than, you know, some powerhouse laptop or or the, like something like the Switch. Definitely. All right, so my first question here that I have is kind of redundant. But the first question that I put on our our little show notes is, what did we think of Google's big announcement? So obviously, I went and created a podcast for it. So (laughs) um, to to liven up my morning here, um, I'm really excited. I was really excited to see this. I'm excited for a multitude of reasons, though. And it's not just because I I like Google. I do like Google, and I I want them to succeed. I played Project Stream, and it worked. That was, I mean, that was the feedback I gave on the podcast is it worked. I played five to six hours of Assassin's Creed Odyssey on my Chrome browser from home and it worked great. I was like, this is amazing. I I just didn't, one, not the biggest Assassin's Creed Odyssey fan. (laughs) So I keep playing it. And two, I didn't want to play on my my computer monitor. Uh, That was the thing. I didn't want to play here. That's where I ran it. I ran it on my, my PC that was plugged in here to my router. Uh, but it worked. It was crazy. I was playing a a brand new full HD game, streaming it. And if I didn't yeah. tell you I was streaming it, you probably wouldn't know. <laughs> I 
I mean, it just <laughs> looked like it was running on, on hardware. So yeah. I believe in the concept. I think it's doable. Um, we're going to get into some of the things that, that we think they're going to run into. But on, on terms of the big announcement, I really liked the reveal. Um, I really liked the way that they kind of set it up. Um, I will go ahead and say this now. You know, there's a lot of folks out there that are that wanted to see games. They wanted to see pride. They wanted to know, right? They came having questions. You know, they came to this looking for answers. And uh, Google didn't give it to them. And um, I, I, I mean, that's that's that was intentional. You know, mm -hmm. like this is their this is their marketing, their messaging. Like that the, they didn't do that because they didn't want to, because they didn't know. That was intentional. It's it's very in line with how consoles or or at least modern consoles have been revealed. Remember the PlayStation Four was shown to us um, with <laughs> you know without a price. Um, they showed some games. Some of those games never came out. <laughs> you know, so like they showed some games, but they didn't necessarily show us you know like a launch lineup of games. And, yeah. uh, you know, the switch had a little commercial and I saw a few clips of some games in there, but you didn't know any of that either. And then until the reveal event. So like, this is par for the course, I think, uh, yeah. unless, unless you just really hate the idea, then all of a sudden I think you're, they didn't show us any games and show us any price. What were they doing? It's like, well, there's plenty of time for that. It is a, I think the idea, <laughs> it's funny because with a console, you're like, I need to know the price of the games because like you're in the end game is I need time to prepare to make mm -hmm. this purchase, right? Like I yeah. have got to save $500 to buy this whenever it comes out. So I need to know. Yeah. This is funny because everybody's like, I need to know. It's like, do you really? They could let us know an hour before it launches and you'd have it available to you because it's, it's just out there. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's an interesting point because I mean, we don't, we don't know the pricing structure. We don't know if this is going to be, um, tied into their other services and it's just going to be some subscription model or if you're going to buy the games individually. But either way, you don't have to buy a box. You don't have to buy some piece of equipment other than maybe a $50 controller. We don't, I mean, we don't know the price of that, but I can't imagine it being outrageous. Um, so you're not really investing into anything. So the library really doesn't matter at this point. I mean, honestly, it, it's more about the technology and if they can deliver on the technology. And if they can deliver on the technology, the games will come. That's that's just something that's a fact. Because um, it's not like they're developing some weird architecture. It's basically just a bunch of PC hardware stuck in a room somewhere that connects to the Internet. So developers can make their games, and if they're making their game on PC already... It's pretty easy to port over. Yeah, I mean, it should be. It's it's pretty simple. So there there really isn't any sort of initial investment into Google Stadia. You you don't have to buy a four hundred dollar box and worry that all the games are going to come to it. You can just sort of sit back and if you want to subscribe or whatever, you know, wait and see what comes. The technology part is probably the the piece that has me most excited. Mm hmm. So we talked about xCloud. We know Gaikai. People don't want to hear this. I know this because in our Discord, we have the Google Stadia channel, and it's been basically full of this since the announcement. Streaming is the future. It just is. Whether you want to like that or don't want to like it, I, I mean, I can't help you there. Right? I can't, I'm not going to try to tell you it's great or it's bad or it's right or it's wrong. It just is. It is the future. Mm -hmm. How do I know this, Donnie? Because everybody's trying to do it. EA was talking about they're looking to a streaming platform. Ubisoft's looking to a streaming platform. Microsoft has publicly touted their streaming platform for two years that um, I, you know, will launch this year. At least they'll start to have trials this year. It'll be made available to the public for the first time this year. Sony's got theirs. Like streaming is the future for a lot of different reasons, but most notably, I think it's going to be hard for me to say this. Um, without all of my numbers, but like the current business model of games is kind of like broken, you know, like this, and we, we see it all the time. This, this idea that you get, you get like some capital funding or, you, you know, you, you're a part of a, 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 a conglomerate, like a network, like Sony studios, like a first party, but you get like basically venture capitalist money. You make a game, you hope it hits. If it doesn't, you basically, you shut down. 
I mean, that's <laughs> there's so many studios that are like one game away from shutting down. Like you hope it hits. If yeah. it does hit. You use all of those profits to pay off your debts and then hopefully clear, you know, profit. And then you use that profit to either gain more money or more investment or to make your next game. And then you hope it hits because if it doesn't, then you probably get shut down. There are very few studios out there that can just flop. They can have a bad game and keep their jobs like it's that, Mm -hmm. you know, dependent on success. And that becomes difficult in a landscape where everybody's making games, there's so yeah. many games that, it, you know, it's just, it's the, the bubbles full. Now I'm not trying to tell you that it's, you know, like times are desperate. They're make they're, you know, everybody's making them because there's a lot of money in games that the, the mm-hmm. business keeps growing year over year. Profits are higher. Um, but the struggle's real for these developers. And we see it all the time. These, these studios, they come up and they close. And I think a lot of, a lot of this trend, this, tangent in a new direction for games is kind of aimed at what we saw xbox talk about when they were first you know concepting or first messaging us what the xbox one was supposed to be and i think a lot of it is is use games and physical games Mm -hmm. you know the physical games and use games is an avenue where they can recoup some costs if they can get rid of it you know they're saving money on shipping, on printing. They're saving money on used game sales and secondhand game sales. The push to go all digital, you know, whether you're streaming it or not, the push to go all digital is real. Like these are these are things that I believe devs and publishers want because they control the price. They control yeah. distribution. You know, like that you know, that they have a better idea of the money that's being spent. And they're basically, long story short, they're basically cutting out the middleman. And mm-hmm. uh, it's taken a long time to get people there. I mean, it wasn't even a generation ago in terms of hardware that we were all like, oh, my God, why is everybody pushing these di- a digital only game? Oh, I don't <laughs> want a digital only game. I want a disc. And now you're not even going to get a, a download. Like it's soon <laughs> yeah. just going to be streaming because the streaming idea is platform, you know, service based model. And that's what everybody's trying to get to. I mean, we see it with games even today. Season passes, battle passes. Right. Monthly subscribers, subscription based. Everybody's chasing yeah. that. Yeah. Just as you were talking, it was making me think about people who like to collect things, um, collect discs. And, and it seems like ever since gaming started, there was this mentality that um, you needed something physical with your games. You needed a cartridge. You needed a disc. You needed a box. Even when it came down to DLC or collector's edition, you wanted some item or statue or, you know, collectible thing. There seems to be like a physical, you want something to hold on to, but video games inherently are a very, very digital product, even from the beginning. I mean, it was all just something you're looking at a screen. And so I, this is definitely a very natural evolution of, of the industry and, and gaming as a whole. Cause honestly, I'm tired of, putting in discs <laughs> i'm tired of you know i've, I've gone very digital in my um, library because i'm tired of of getting up and putting in and discs and switching out games and i mean it it sounds lazy but i mean isn't that what technology is for it's for making our lives easier and being able to instantly have access to everything that you quote unquote own because i know a lot of people with the digital they're like oh you don't really own it it's like even if you own a disc, you don't really own it. That's true. <laughs> all, you, all you have is a license key that says that you can you have access to play this game. You can they can issue a patch and shut that down. you know instantly on on modern hardware. Um, yeah. The term I was trying to remember was revolving revenue. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants revenue coming in. You know, frequently, more frequently than once every five years when you sell a game. You know, everybody's trying to. <laughs> I need to get paid the first of the month. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and the points you made are, are, are true. We, we've already seen it with music and movies and, you know, basically any, any digital product out there, software, you know, nobody's doing what games are doing. It's like the last stronghold for this, you know, it's like the yeah. last frontier and, um, yeah, you just like the industry push is definitely there. They're putting millions. I, I feel pretty safe in saying if you count google oh, yeah. like maybe billions they're putting millions <laughs> of dollars into making sure that this happens yeah so whether or not 
you like it or I like it. And whether or not it's great out of the gate or, or not, it's going to happen. And um, so I've, I've more or less come to – I think I, I was I – was, mentally prepared to accept this news and be excited about it because I've come to grips with that reality that this is going to happen. So what am I can, I can angrily tweet about it or I can <laughs> like get on board because they, they showcased a lot of things that, that were possible that I don't think we've, we could have ever imagined outside of a streaming idea, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the play share and the onboarding of YouTube. Like I, I can't tell you, and we're going to get into that. I don't want to cut all of our, our points down, but man, like that, that's such a big deal. All these social integrations, you can't do that in the current gaming, you know, model with desks yeah. and, and carts and all of that and hardware, you know, it's just too much, it's too much to, to code around. Yeah. And um, back to our original question about what did we think of Google's big announcement? Um, I'm very excited for it. And I think the biggest thing that I'm excited for outside of just, you know, being a gamer is Google's mindset towards it in that I saw a lot of people making fun of um, the Google CEO, Sundar Pichai, and how he's like, oh, I'm not really a gamer. I play FIFA, but that's about it. And saying like, well, if, if they're not a gamer, why are they trying to get into the gaming industry? And I think that's why I'm excited is because Google is coming at this with a technological approach they're thinking what can we bring to make to improve it not just what games can we bring but what technology can we bring to make this better for everybody and i think that's really interesting they're treating almost like a service provider you know, yeah they're like we don't you know it's almost like I'm not saying they're saying this, but it's honestly, it feels like they're like, these folks don't know how to do this. <laughs> so yeah. Let, you know, like, let's, let's show them what can be done. And I'm yeah. with you. Google, like I said, we've talked, I mean, Google's huge. They're big. I mean, they're super big, uber big, <laughs> like they're everything big. Yeah. Um, it's exciting to, with a player of that kind of magnitude entering the gaming space. Um, gaming's a hard, a hard business to crack. You know, it's hard to, hard to bust into there. Google definitely has the means to do so should they want to. And uh, that, I guess that'll be my big question. But, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the pricing, you know, kind of uh, we, they didn't talk about the price. We don't know what they're we don't know what it's going to cost to have access to this platform. We do not know how they're going to sell games. Um, but Eves, Guimont, Guimo, I, I, <laughs> for years on our video game podcast, I, I never uh, no Eve's last name, but from Ubisoft, everybody knows Eve's Gimo, Gimot, Gimon, Gim Gimon, Eve's <laughs> Gimon. Um, he was there. Um, Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed with being such a, a big deal, and and he he, he spoke to Gamespot, and uh, they asked him, "How do you think this pricing is going to roll out?" And he said, "I think you'll have a multitude of ways. Either you can buy full price and you can play, or you'll also be able to register possibly to play either one." two hours at a time, there'll be plenty of other ways to play these games. So huh. it's a huge question. And I think it's maybe the number one question in everybody's mind is how, how much is this going to cost and, and, and what, what do we have access to? Um, the rental idea is very interesting because it's one of the things that PlayStation now does that I really don't like. I don't like it on the PlayStation side specifically because it feels like it, like uh, like the cost isn't worth it, you know. They're like it's six dollars to play a game for an hour. I'm like, what? <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> or like the 24 hour rentals. Um, my only PlayStation Now really experience is I I bought it for uh, a day on my Vita to play Hot Shots Golf. Mm -hmm. And um, you can talk about like input lag. Having input lag on Hot Shots Golf is bad. Like, that's terrible <laughs> because the whole idea is that you're supposed to have really precise, you know, that three click, you know, slider mechanics. So I was, I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. Um, yeah. Cause it, yeah, it just it did not work well. Um, but back to this, I mean, my thought on pricing is that they absolutely will have a, a subscription model. I don't know if it's going to be like an all you can eat. I, I would prefer that. Um, yeah. If you're asking me like the best thing, way that they could do this. I would love to give them like 50 bucks a month and just be able to play whatever I want. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be the best thing that they could do for me as a consumer. Um, but I could also see them having a, like a game pass, you know, menu where here's 20 games, you know, on Stadia 
that you can pay 15 bucks a month to and play and like maybe those games swap out every month and then in addition to those subscription services then you can buy the games the buying of the games is interesting because while while there is competition in the physical and digital space i don't see how you can really get somebody on board with paying you know, like pay me $60 to stream a game versus paying Xbox $60 to download the game like one of those seems more valuable than the other so mm-hmm. or at least to me so i think that'll be um a struggle for them which is where i think the subscription thing uh, comes in but also you know in the in the unveil that they showed like you're watching a youtube video you're watching somebody play assassin's creed suddenly you want to you want to play that game they're going to start implementing and this is huge like this is i don't even know they're so smart <laughs> <laughs> Google's so smart. I don't know how they're going to recode all of YouTube to do this, <laughs> but YouTube will just have a play button that'll just launch Stadia from YouTube. Yeah. So if you're watching a game that's on Studio, there's just a button there, and you click it, and you're in the game. To do that, I think you have to have a subscription service because nobody wants to click that and then be launched into a store and then give me your credit card, right? Like, yeah, you need some sort of access, fast access pass for people to really realize that, you know, that ingenuity and that, that kind of grand fantasy. Yeah. It, it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a combination of you can either subscribe or you can piecemeal the games. Um, I didn't really think about the rental thing. But it is, it is interesting um, because if you are watching a YouTube video and it's a game that you don't own and you want to try it out or play it and you press that play button and now there's a big pop-up like, oh, just pay $59.99 and you can play this game or, or, you know, you, it would be more, um, it'd be easier. It'd be easier it to would get be, somebody if it was like, you know, like Google play dollar ninety yeah. for an hour, you know, or yeah, or, like or even just like, Hey, you know, click this button and sign up because you're already signed into YouTube with your Gmail account and you get a month free of Google Stadia. And now you can play this game for, you know, now. And so the subscription model, I feel like, especially since it is a, a streaming, I mean, it's a platform technically, there is hardware involved, but um, as a streaming service type of thing, the subscription model makes more sense to me. Yep. But I wouldn't be surprised if you could also just buy games that you have um, that you own in your library because sure. you know I've I've got dozens of movies yep. sitting in in my Google Play Movies app that you know I own and I have access to at any time stream and play anytime you want mm-hmm. yeah so I, I wouldn't be surprised if now you've got a Google Play games section and these are all the games you own you click on them and you start playing I want to say that I don't think game developers would be too happy to support a a, um, a platform where people couldn't pay them for the game. Yeah, you know, like I, I wonder from the from the software provider stance, from the developer side and the publisher side, like this whole if it was just a subscription, I wonder if that yeah. would turn them off a little bit. You know, like wait a minute, if someone wants to give me sixty dollars for Assassin's Creed, we want to take that. We want to take that money. Um, yeah. but it's very interesting, like how they could possibly sell, you know, streaming rights to a game. When there are physical and you know downloadable versions of it, like I feel like there is a comparison that should be made there, um, and it, it's interesting because I want to know. I don't think they will, but I, I would love to see them play with the price. I would love to see them challenge that a bit. It'd be crazy if mm-hmm. it was like you can buy every game, you know, full retail game for forty dollars because yeah. you're streaming on Stadia. And that's a very interesting point because I see a lot of arguments of, oh, why am I paying the same price for the digital copy as I would if I just walked into GameStop or Best Buy? And you hear a lot of people say, well, they have to keep the pricing the same because they can't just screw over their their brick and mortar <laughs> <Google> stores. <can. laughs> yeah, because those stores, they're reliant on places like GameStop and Best Buy uh, to sell their boxes to sell the hardware to play the games. But if you have no hardware to play the games, you could sell your games theoretically at any price and not worry about these brick and mortar stores and, you know, matching the price. Plus with the digital, you know, take of things like you're not losing money from anybody possibly reselling that copy you mm-hmm. know, or trading it in. 
you're not losing any money. I mean, really at all, like it's, everything is there in, in the library, um, outside of Google's ability, you know, to maintain a, a streaming, you know, connection for that. So like, mm-hmm. it honestly makes sense for, you know, a provider like Ubisoft to even, even maybe, you know, to push people that way, make it a little worth doing, um, because you're making money on it long term. like in the, in the, at the end, you're going to make it like, if everybody just started streaming via Stadia, they're gonna be making more money in the end. You know, yeah. yeah, because yeah. Do you think they'll do like a like a free trial? I think they will. Oh yeah, I mean they pretty much have a free trial for everything else. Yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with a you know the subscription service and they're like, here's the price, and it's surprising how cheap it is. Um, I mean, for like Google Drive, you can pay ten dollars a month and you've got a terabyte of storage. Yeah. Um, when Google Play Music first came out. I mean, it's ten dollars now, but you could get in early access for eight dollars a month. And ten dollars now includes like, like YouTube Premiere. Yeah, premium. yeah. So I've got I've got Google Play um, Music, and I've got the eight dollar early access subscription fee that I had when I first signed up. And now I've got Google Play Music. I've got um, YouTube Premiere. You know, I've got all the benefits that come with that, which is really interesting. I'd be It'd be awesome if they just tied it in. They just <laughs> rolled that. everything together. <laughs> but I doubt that they would Subscribe do that. Subscribe to us. You get uh, movie rentals. You get music. You get YouTube, <laughs> premium, and you get video games. No, that, that'd, yeah. be, that'd be cool. Now I'm expecting them to either have a free game, maybe you know something from Ubisoft, or yeah, we're launching Stadia in October, and you can play all of October for free. You know, like just sign yeah. up, and you can play all month long for free. Yeah, there'll probably be a, a trial period, like a month free that you get when you, if you're a new subscriber. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's cheaper than people are expecting. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about some challenges that we think Stadia is going to face. So I wrote some down, and like I said, we've had a lot of discussion already in our Discord, um, PSVG PSVG dot blog slash Discord. If you guys want to come hang out with uh, the coolest group of people on the internet. My very first challenge, I think, is obvious. Performance, connection, stability. You know, this is everybody's, you know, go-to thing. Like, we're going to see input lag. You know, some people are not going to be able to run this. It's dependent on your internet connection. One of the things that I didn't cover, because I honestly don't think it's all that important, was talking about the the stack that they're running these games on and how strong and powerful and teraflops and all that, because... Guess what? It doesn't matter. Your internet connection yeah. isn't strong enough to, to make use of that power. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, that that little hardware flex that they did in the middle, that was that was definitely not for consumers. It was that weird. was for Yeah, it was that was for developers yes. through and through. That yeah. was them saying, if you come develop for our platform, you're gonna be developing on the latest, most powerful hardware. The thing about that like, is your dev just plain kit, and simple. Like your dev kit is like you know, a very current, strong, modern PC mm-hmm. architecture. You know, you're not dumbing things down. You're not lowering resolutions and settings to, to, to you know, to get it to work, to make it fit. You're not limited yeah. by memory. You know, like you're, it's just the best PC gaming rig. Not the best. Yeah. <laughs> but, but well, a really good one. Because, because of the hardware and because they've got these dozens or hundreds of, of little um, mini PCs in their data center, developers who are developing for this platform uh, i think about right now if you're a developer and you're developing for the ps4 pro or the the one x you've got to worry about the low end of the original launch xbox ones yep. um, with if you're making an exclusive for google stadia it's always going to be the same and every time they upgrade one box they're going to upgrade all of them and that's and so you're always going to have the hardware all the same because you're streaming because it's scalable you've got to think that there's got to be at least a little intrigue there to developers to just have a kit that can be can be expanded in the sense that yeah consumers don't need to go buy a new 500 hundred dollar box to take you know part of your latest update you know five years from now let's just say ubisoft could release an 8k patch for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And if you're streaming it on Stadia and you have the internet means to do so, you just pick it up and play it. You've delivered yeah. that update to all all consumers across any piece of hardware. You can't do that anywhere else. It's impossible to do that yeah, anywhere the, else. Like in the current the, 
the scalability is on Google's side. It really has nothing to do with developers. Because if, if an internet connection can't run it, they just drop it down to 720p, 30 frames a second, or you know, or whatever. Yep. But anyways, so challenges. We'll we'll start yes. on the negative side. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's start. Let's start on the negative stuff. The very first feedback from from this was: this is never going to work. There are people mm-hmm. out in the world that don't have the internet for this. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, there's never going to work because the input lag. You just can't. You can't do it. That's not not as true. Yes, yeah. there's going to be input lag. It's going to be a challenge. Like it's going to be depend on your on your thing, on your internet speed. But I've played it. It does work. <laughs> I've seen it yeah. work. Um, <laughs> I don't think I. I want to bring this up. So they, they they had hands on demos after the event. So it was there in San Francisco in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. So industrial strength internet right next to one of their data centers, and a lot of people that went hands on, especially the video games. I was going to say. I read maybe three articles from video game sites. So I want to say mm-hmm. GameStop, GameSpot. Um, I want to say maybe IGN, and I, I watched a, a YouTuber, like a hands-on video. But then I also read three from, like, tech sites. They, they had yeah. a little different thing to say, so I wanted to just say that. But they all reported noticeable input lag with Doom, mm-hmm. which is probably not the best first impression. You know, you're launching this thing. Everybody's already concerned and you're on this great internet signal, you know, there right next to one of the data centers and you still have input lag. Now it's a twitchy shooter like doom. So I honestly almost expected it to be that way, but I also think there might be a little bit here. There might be a little something here to this because the video game sites that, that I read, they, they were the ones that brought it up. They're like, and we had noticeable input lag. But I read if yeah. you go like go read like Ars Technica or The Verge or Engadget, they're all like, I can't believe this works. You know, like the tech <laughs> side of it, they're almost like, this totally works and I didn't have to buy a machine and this is awesome. So I'm wondering like those reporters that are more used to playing video games, you know, like like us, if they're gonna, you know, we're gonna notice it more than the average consumer. And yeah. then I just wanted to bring that that difference up because, you know, Google's making a big play to bring more people into gaming. Mm-hmm. And, you know, something like some of the things that we think you're like, oh, my God, I can't play if input lag is, you know, higher than 40 millisecond. You know, like <laughs> I don't necessarily know how much that matters to people that don't know. And there's a, there's more of them than us. <laughs> there's more yeah. people that have no idea anything about that. Um, they're just going to think it's cool if they pick up a controller and can play on their TV. They're like, oh, this is this is this is neat. Yeah. Like, oh, what? I can I can play the the newest Assassin's Creed game on my $35 Chromecast. Like, yes. Um, no, the performance, definitely. Um, input lag, that is probably the biggest challenge um, that Stadia will face. There really isn't... Uh, I mean, there are, you have other things listed here that we'll talk about, but that's definitely the biggest. That is the most concerning to people in the input lag. And it's, I mean, it's something that you should be concerned about. Um, a game could be unplayable if the input lag is severe enough. Hot um, shots. <laughs> but I have I have played like I remember playing um what was it? What was that game that was delayed for like ten years with the big giant bird dog? The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian. I remember playing that because I was excited for it. I bought it like a couple weeks after it came out and they hadn't issued a patch yet. And I had to stop playing it until they patched it because literally it was like a full second between pressing the jump button and you jumping. the character jumping. I felt that way in Red Dead Redemption 2 <laughs> quite a bit. There was a lot of like delayed commands. Yeah. I was like, this is driving me nuts. <laughs> and so development can play a big part of it, um, but it, it can make a game unplayable. But I really don't think that Google would be issuing this if they didn't think that they could do it. Um, at least make it good enough. They're, I don't think that they're ever going to tout that it's going to have you know zero input lag that right. it's going to be as good as well, it's a impossible. controller it's impossible you're not running yeah. you're not running locally right you have yeah. to send a signal now you know devin brings up that up all the time in terms of upload speed i mean you're literally sending an input command it's no different than like pressing yeah. the the letter button on your keyboard like how fast is that you know it's not that big of a deal and i think it's interesting that they're they're trying to eliminate a lot of the um the back and forth by having the controller connect directly to Wi-Fi 
and connect directly to Google Stadia. Yep. So you're giving inputs directly to the data center rather than to the device that's streaming it and then back to Google Stadia. It's it's a direct connection, which will probably help a lot. And and they mentioned, you know, that all of this is going to run on on their private network. You know, yeah. so for those that don't know, Google has been building their own private you know, data network, um, dumping billions of dollars. Like they're laying all this underground, uh, underwater, you know, lines are connecting continents together. Like they've got thousands of data centers. They brought it up in this thing, but if, if you've, if you've never, if you, if you want to know more, there's a really great article at New York Times. Just look up, um, you know, like Google underwater New York Times of how basically like the ocean, it's like the new, you know, gold rush. And you've got Microsoft and Amazon and Google. They're all snapping up the rights to lay cable because there's like this, you know, there's this gold rush on on getting there first. Who are the people that, that drop this? So they've got this gigantic network um, that's all private that, you know, that they're working with Internet service providers. So everything will go mm-hmm. through your Internet service provider to Google's network. And then once it Google's network, they're doing everything internal. So they're connecting yeah. you to a local a local hub. They're doing all that, and they send it back to your inter- your internet service provider. Um, but yeah, yeah I, right. I found, go ahead. I, was, I found that interesting. Um, I'm looking at the video now. Um, they showed how it currently works. You've got the game player interacting with the console, which then goes to the ISP, which goes through a bunch of nodes to get to the game server or the the cloud provider, and then you get to Google side, and it's the game player interacting just directly with their ISP yep. which interacts with Google. Yep. You've got two steps to get to the the brains of the operation um, rather than upwards of of seven, you know, at, le- at least in their little graphic here. Now you um, you mentioned my my favorite term in all of this and we were talking about performance is good enough. That's that's mm-hmm. the question. Can it be good enough? Can it be good enough yeah. to make it playable? Um folks listen to the show. This isn't going to replace hardware. Microsoft's going to release new hardware. Sony's going to release new hardware. Nintendo's going to release new hardware. Like this, this isn't like the end. Google didn't show up and, (laughs) oh no, consoles are dead. They're going to die. Like eventually Mm -hmm. it's going to be a while. We've got at least another gen, probably two. um, And that's before like we really start to go down this way. But the question is, can Google make it good enough? You know, like right now they're, they're, they're recommending 25 uh, megabits per second download speeds to be able to run this. That's that's kind of like their optimal ideal thing. Now, um, they said 4K will be available at launch, and for that you need maybe 30. I ran a speed mm-hmm. test on my cell service at the office. I'm almost 50. And then at home, I'm in the, I'm well into the 40s. So I'm, I'm one of the, I guess, the chosen people where this should work. <laughs> this should work for me. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't. You know, like yeah. that's a real thing. And uh, that's I've probably seen more of that than anything else. If you like, if you read the YouTube comments on the trailer that they posted. Oof, man, there are a lot <laughs> of people there. They're mad, but it's interesting because they they seem they're like, my internet is only eight megabits per second. Why are you doing this? And it's like, for those those people that their internet's not, you know, like if you if your internet isn't strong enough to run it, then obviously, yeah. you know, like this this product isn't for you right now. So, well, it it's just funny because that's that's not. Like if somebody comes out with some game that requires a, a, a an NVIDIA 1080 or they've got the new 2080s, like I don't complain that it can't run on my 10 year old desktop. It's, you know? like, it's not like it like it shouldn't exist. You know, they're like, wait a minute, I can't do this. Why are you doing this? Shouldn't be a thing. It's like for those that yeah. that can. Uh, but I get I get it. I get the concerns with um, the data speed. Yeah, um, I, I think. A bigger one that I've seen, which is definitely very valid, is data caps. A lot mm-hmm. of places have data caps when it comes to it, and streaming a 4K game for an hour, you know, could it. be several gigabytes. But you know, um, but Google doing this, um, you know, on the we talked about the technology side, but Google doing this could also go a really long ways into helping those types of issues. You know, yeah. like making a demand for this puts pressure on the internet ser- service providers to provide packages, you know, that, that account for this and that erase data caps and things like that. And that demand that want to, you know, it's all competition. Now it's not going to be their day one, but it's all competition. And those types mm-hmm. of things start to work their way out. 
Um, you know, like Google Fiber put pressure on Comcast and other people to up their game. You know, like those yeah. are new, you know, there's a new sheriff in town. And I'm looking at Stadia. If Stadia does stuff like that on the internet and the gaming side, even if it's a failure, could be a success. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, even look at Netflix and the yes. things that they've done to change ISPs and make internet service better. Because in this day and age, internet service has, is becoming more of a necessity than a privilege. Yep. It's, um, it's something that, it's power. yeah, it's there's, water. there are a lot of companies that I deal with just to pay my bills that I can only do it online. And that if, if, if I didn't have internet, like I, there's literally things that I just couldn't use. Um, so hopefully, and that's what I'm hoping is that Google, yeah, like you said, even if this is a failure and ends up, Google ends up abandoning it or, or whatever, nobody subscribes to it. Hopefully they make enough of an effort and push with it that it, it changes things for the better just in terms of internet access and um, ISP is not being so greedy. And honestly, it, when, when it takes somebody like Google, somebody with the, with the resources they have to kind of put that kind of pressure on, you know, Nintendo's yeah. not capable of doing anything like that. Mm -mm. You know, that's, that's how big, you know, they are. My next challenge that I, I put down on our notes here is breaking the traditions of gaming culture. Do it. I think this is, honestly, I might even argue that this is the, the biggest challenge they're going to face. I mean, we already see it in the early feedback from this. People do not like the idea of a streaming platform. Mm -hmm. People do not like the idea of this digital future. They want to buy a box. Console, like, game, I said this in PSVG for years, and I'm, I'm, I'm a part of it. Gamers love consoles. Like, anytime there's mm -hmm. a rumor of hardware, that's big news. Like, we like buying boxes. Don't get it wrong. Um, so <laughs> breaking into the gaming market is very difficult. I mean, look at how much money it has cost Microsoft to become a player in gaming. You know, they took a yeah. loss in the original Xbox, you know, like they pushed live and all that. They launched 360. It was a success, but remember like the red ring of death it cost them millions, you know, like mm -hmm. they have really put up, you know, a serious amount of money just to break in. They're still not even like, you know, the it platform, but they're, mm -hmm. they're just to be taken seriously. And I'm Google's going to have to do that. My my only question regarding this entire thing in terms of hope and, and belief and their ability to succeed or not is if can Google like weather, weather the storm? Like, are they here for real? Like, are they here, yeah. you know, for the long haul? Do they look at this as a service, you know, for decades or is this like a, you know, a venture play? Or like, mm -hmm. Can we get in here? And if not, then we'll go do something else. Um, because breaking into breaking into gamers living rooms is difficult. You know, we're, we have. There's a lot of brand loyalty. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of tribalism. Um, we like, as you mentioned, we we like our boxes for whatever reason. We're, we're tied to to physical goods, and Google's yeah. kind of just upending all of it. They're literally <laughs> just they just flip the monopoly table. They're like everything you think you know, we're doing away with, and uh, it's going to be hard for them to to capture the hearts and minds of of loyal gamers. I think. Yeah, that that'll be that'll definitely be tough. Um, I'm fortunate that I've never really been tied to any of that thing, and I love change. I love things being different and new. And even if it fails, you can always go back to the old. Love like that's progress. not really. Yeah, but it, it what the changes could mean. But um, yeah, there are a lot of people that they love having their gaming shelves filled with all their old consoles and their collections, and and that that can be difficult to break through. Yeah, and I don't think that will ever go away completely. Um, and, and, and we're talking about, it's not like Google's going to launch this at the end of 2019 and people are going to be like, Oh, we don't need consoles anymore. Right. Like that's not going to happen. If, if it happens and everybody goes the streaming route, it's going to be a minimum of 10 years. Yeah. I'm with you. Like at maybe at the end of the next generation, it's not going to happen this generation. I wouldn't even be surprised if it didn't happen at the end of next generation. Like we're talking a minimum of 10 years before <laughs> anything like that happens. If it does. One of the things that I was, that I wanted to postulate. So they, they, did, they told us that we'll find, we'll, we'll know more. We'll get more details this summer. That's what they mm -hmm. said. Now Google IO is in May. But that's really for developers. And I'm sure we'll we'll find out more then. I'm sure Stadia will be there. But I would yeah. really like to see them show up at E3. I, I, I want to go as far as saying I'd really love for them to take the stage at E3. 
yeah. I think that would go a long way at trying to reach, you know, like the core gaming enthusiast market. Being on stage, yeah. playing like everybody else plays, like showing up, not just being different for different sake, but actually they're like, hey, we're here with you. We love video games. You know, put Phil Harrison on stage at E3, have them showcase Stadia, announce the price, announce the games, have it playable on show floor, you know, like let gamers touch it, be there. I think that would go a long way for PR, marketing, word of mouth, and really letting letting gamers kind of spread the word for you. Let them be your evangelists. Mm-hmm. Like, let them see it and, and adopt it as a gaming thing and not just a Google thing. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them show up at E3. I mean, their initial reveal was at the Gaming Developer Conference. It wasn't at Google I.O., you know, it, it wasn't at their own thing. They went to a gaming conference. So I wouldn't be surprised if we show that we see them show up at E3. They've been at E3. Um, mm-hmm. They've been at E3 for the past two years. So if, if you're um, listening to a lot of podcasts on the video game, you know, circuit, I've been hearing that Google's been there. If you listen to Kotaku and Polygon and IGN, like they've been having meetings. And Jason Schreier has even been saying that they've been... Um, I, I want. I don't want to misquote his his tweet, but I, I want to say he's, they've been like buying games. Yeah. They've been hiring developers. They've been buying games. They've been signing deals. Like this wasn't it, right? Like this reveal, they didn't just like. They, it's not like they don't know and they don't have it. They've got it. They've been doing it. They've been laying the groundwork for two years. I remember from last year's E3. If you listen to like Podcast Beyond, they were like Google's <laughs> here and they're taking a bunch of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> like nobody knew what they were doing, but they're like they're here. They're it's pretty open. Uh, they're meeting with all these folks. Yeah. Phil Harrison's got a, a conference room. <laughs> all these people keep funneling in and out of. So they've got something to say. Um, yeah. Yeah. I definitely. think that would be a great place to do it. Um, another challenge that I, I think they're going to run into is early success. Um, I think there will be early adopters like us. You know, these enthusiasts that want to see it. Um, I would honestly do it just... I'm really excited and hopeful because it's Google. But even if it wasn't mm-hmm. Google, like I'm somebody that tried on live. I'll just try it. Like I love new stuff. I love tech. So, like anybody yeah. that comes out with something, I'm gonna, I'm probably going to try it anyway. Um, but because it's <laughs> Google and I have my army of Chromebooks and Chromecasts, I'm really excited. Um, yeah. But early success is going to be hard because one, because they're all streaming. It's all digital. There's no downloads. Whereas Microsoft and PlayStation Now is basically offering both. And mm-hmm. I've I've been saying this. I, I believe the next Xbox is going to be kind of like a blend of these models. It's going to be streaming you know, available, but also downloads and, and ran locally. I'm, I'm expecting mm-hmm. uh, Xbox to kind of go, you can buy your game from the game store, but while you wait for it to install, you can stream it instantly. Um, yeah. I, I think they're going to like offer streaming access for your entire library. So like if you want to stream a game, like you can without paying extra for it, or you yeah. can pay us to stream a collection of games. Or like if you're a Game Pass subscriber, you can stream all of those games on your phone. You know, yeah. that's kind of where I'm expecting Xbox to go. And if it works, I'm expecting Google's, you know, their subscription numbers won't be that grand when they kick off because mm-hmm. you're going to have this other competition. And I think that's okay. Cause like I said, gaming is a long, long game. You know, like they can't be here for instant success. No. And, and competition breeds innovation. Yes. I mean, I, I would be, I would be more disappointed if it was only Xbox or only Google. I like that Xbox and Google are both going into this almost pretty much at the same time. Yeah. Um, that way they get to compete against each other, and that's only good for the consumer. It just and means we got this, that... The, that response from Phil Spencer. You know, <clears throat> mm-hmm. He saw the, the presentation. He sent out an internal memo, you know, basically saying, like, <laughs> they showed out. We can't wait to go big. You know, like, we're going to go yeah. big at E3. And I really loved he was like, this validates our path forward. Like the the road that we're on. Like I said, this is happening. Whether we want it to happen or not, it is happening. Xbox is going to do it. Sony's going to do it. Everybody's going to do it. Nintendo will be yeah. dead last. They're going to do it like via cardboard. Like so, it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> take forever. Um, but yeah, everybody's going to do it eventually. Um, Labo streaming. Labo streaming. Um, the the other challenge is is what we've already kind of talked about. So it's been too much time here. But they're disrupting the model. Like they're disrupting mm. how video gamers buy and access games, which makes me question. How are developers getting paid? Like if Google's taking like, are they going to take it like a YouTube approach to this where the games that are streamed the most 
gets most of the revenue? Like, is it like a percentage thing? Because I don't necessarily know if that's good for... I don't know if that's good for the developer. Yeah, I... Who knows? That's a whole business side that I have zero Yeah, no, I'm very interested in about. hearing from some developers. I Eventually, I, after it launches and whatnot, I'm pretty sure somebody will go out there and they'll fail and then they'll take their games off and then they'll talk about it. And I, I would love to know, like, why you know, what's happening, um, how they're getting paid, how they're making money, because, and speaking of that, like, I feel like it, I feel like it's, it's worth saying this. I don't think this is going to be the case, but do, do you think there might be like, like ads? Um, like in game? I, <laughs> it's, it's worth saying, possible. right? It's plausible. Yeah, it, it's definitely possible. I don't think it's going to be like an interrupting ad, like, like YouTube. Yeah, maybe an There's ad pops commercial. up. Like, I think of maybe an <laughs> in in less intrusive way of doing it is maybe you've got a loading screen, and a little ad pops up during the loading screen. Sure. But like, I don't, I don't expect like an ad to pop up like in no, the I'm, middle of a fight. Like, you know, something I don't like that. expect it to happen. But like I said, I, I think it's, it could. It's, it's plausible. It's something to yeah. think about, and it, it is a it is could. a way of making revenue that could be shared with developers. You know, like that's possible. Um, speaking yeah, the of whole, this, go ahead. the whole paying developers based on how much your game is played. I think that's probably one of the worst models they could take because yeah. it just encourages bad development and we need to make our game, you know, have a really long shelf life, you know, even if it's bad for the consumers. And that's what I was thinking with um, whether they do an, an all you can eat access pass or they do a game pass pass or something like that, uh, maybe both but some sort of subscription thing where the fee is laid out ahead of time. You know, like every, if you put your game in the subscription service, you get 1% of total revenue or I don't know. I'm just throwing mm-hmm. up numbers, but something like that makes a lot more sense for developers than, uh, you know, cause Fortnite gets played the most and they, they get all the money. <laughs> that, that'd be, that'd be yeah. very interesting. Um, all right. So let's talk about advantages, things that we think can, can help them find success. And my first one keeping on this is the social integration and onboarding. I can't tell mm-hmm. you how exciting I thought it was when they showed the YouTube video and you click play and you're into the game. I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, we were, we were postulating on it before the event. I was like, man, could you imagine if they built, like I even, I think I said it in discord. Could you imagine if they built this into YouTube? I was like, I wonder yeah. if you're going to be able to stream like directly into YouTube. Like you've got to be right. And then when yeah. they showed this, I was blown away. The reason that I'm blown away is because YouTube is huge, it's huge, so much bigger than like gaming. Like they have the potential to reach masses like nobody. I mean, when this thing launches, I know you're going to agree with this, but listeners out there, when this thing launches, every YouTube video, every Google search page, everything is going to have an ad that says stadia on it and they're mm-hmm. going to direct you to this platform. You're not going to be able to not <laughs> see it. That's big deal. And it's, it's going to go a long way if their whole, you can boot up the game in five seconds is true. Yes. I mean, nothing turns somebody off more than they click an ad and it takes them 20 minutes to get going into what was advertised. But if yeah. they can click a button and it just immediately starts playing, I mean, that's, that's big. That'll go a long way. It's your and... cat videos. It's your <laughs> fail videos. It's your, it's your music acapella cover videos. It's gaming videos. I mean, all of that. If is... you like this cat game, you'll like Cat Quest on Google Stadia. <laughs> yes, exactly. And this is, it's, that's such an advantage that I think every console maker would love to have. If you think mm-hmm. about reaching, I mean, that's the whole point of like E3 and these, these stage shows and keynotes and Nintendo directs is you're, they're trying to reach their customers and talk to them. And Google basically has that in house. Yeah. They don't even have to pay for it. They just own it. <laughs> and I, th- I think, um, the thing that I'm most excited about is the state share. Like when they were first talking about it, I found it kind of weird, um, that you would, you know, get somebody save or whatever, but I, I've thinked about I've th- I thought about a dozen times where I've been watching somebody stream a game or, or watching a Let's Play to see if I'm interested in this game. And to be able to watch them play for an hour and then decide I want to get this game, and I press a button and I start playing the game, and I start playing from the point that they left at, 
and I don't have to go through that first hour of, of what I've already watched, especially games like, you know, walking simulators, those sure. kind of games that are yeah. very narrative, to be able to just jump in and start playing from the point that they ended. I, I think that's very interesting. Again, disruptive. When we brought this up, like, I was like, does this mean I can beat Hollow Knight? Like, can I just have Jason play it and then send me a link? And then yeah. I, like, I don't know, like, if, if they'll have here's, achieved here's my anything, save. Like, Get through this hard part this. Like, obviously, I don't know. I don't think it'll r- work with, like, multiplayer games. Like, you can't do that in no. Fortnite. But, like, this is a crazy thing. Uh, we all we were all making jokes when, when the rumor came out ahead of time that they were going to, like, do this save sharing thing. Um, I'm playing Breath of the Wild f- with Nintendo Shack this month, and my son just started playing it. And we watched the Google thing. And my son was like, oh, is Nintendo going to do this? And I was like, no. He's like, because then you could play and share with me because you've got all the gear and all the armor. Like, there's a really cool – I think you're right. I've completely – I want to say I flipped on it because I thought it was neat, but I also thought it was, like, gimmicky. But seeing yeah. it, seeing their, their visualization of this makes me yeah. – I actually think it could be a big deal. I mean, it could be disruptive. Like it could change how people play games. You think about the generation, you know, below us and how they're coming up. Like everything is multiplayer and everything is, if it's not multiplayer, it's social being able to onboard people and get them playing things together. Let's say we're playing like red dead redemption two. And, but I played it a month, you know, before you ever got it, but we're talking about it. You want to play it. I just send you a link and you're caught up to me. It's like a bookmark. You're just, yeah. And, the state share, if we're thinking about it limitedly in just like sharing your game save, um, but I think it has a lot more potential in that, and that they could actually develop it to where you could share just certain things. Yeah, like maybe maybe you don't want to start from where they were, but you want the gear that they had, like you said, or you know you could just share things piecemeal. I don't know if that's possible, but there's like certainly the potential for it. It's like, like yeah. some internal cheat code. Um, it's pretty cool. And, they, you know, they mentioned that they're going to, like, build a game around this. Mm. They're going to build a game around state shit where, like, you play the game to a certain point and then you give it to somebody else to pick up where you left off. But think about, yeah. like, what that could mean for Stadia where you build a, a network of gamers who are streaming a game that they share with each other. So they're all sharing this game around. They're all streaming it together and they're all playing it on the same platform at the same time. Yeah. All of a sudden, this Stadia name, the concept, becomes clear. <laughs> you know, like yeah, they built a gaming platform around YouTube, essentially. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of potential for it. And they talked about being at the 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 share button on the controller is just immediately will upload. You know, your stream to it's, YouTube it's at captured, 4K, 60 yeah, it's frames. It's captured instantly on a separate machine. No mm-hmm. capture card, no hardware, no PC. As somebody who has a gaming PC that I bought specifically for streaming and I have a capture card, I got to tell you, I don't like streaming games. It's not because I, I don't enjoy like playing games with people. It's because I hate chasing frames and buttons and, and codecs yeah. and, and keys and stream keys and all that. Like, just press the button just, and stream right just away. press the button and you go. And... and- the YouTube integration with also with the streaming and the state share is if you're playing a game that you can have multiple people, um, you just share your state, people join in, and now you're all playing you're in playing. the same match in the same game. Like that's that's and it's, really cool. And it's like it's like Google Drive. It's just a link. Mm-hmm. It's YouTube. You literally yeah. just send a link and click, and I'm in. <laughs> there's no like download. There's no file. Like there's no you know there's nothing of that. You just send a link and you're there. That's insane. Yeah. That could, it's disruptive. Like that is an advantage so great that I think it's hard that if it works, I mean, let, let's preface that if it works, cause that, none of that was uh, hands on from what I've read and, and listened to. None of yeah. this stuff was hands on. You couldn't do any of this in the demos. If it works, this is something that nobody else can have. This is something that nobody else can do. Like you can't do this in Xbox and PlayStation. I don't so- think they're capable <laughs> yeah, one thing that I thought of uh, a few days ago, in and it kind of goes along with the disruption of the current model of gaming, is I was thinking about the evolution of games and how when it first started, we had cartridges, there was no loading, and then we got to discs, and now there is loading screens, and and now we're at the point where you have to download, and even if you have a disc, you have to install it on your box. Oh. And now there's a day one patch. It's bigger I mean, I than remember, the game most times. I remember playing the first um, Battlefront 
that came out a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had to wait two hours because I had a day one patch yep. and I had to install it on my Xbox, even though I had the disc. And so I was thinking what Google Stadia could mean for that. And theoretically, they could eliminate day one patches yeah. because everything is already there. Um, you're not going to load up and it's like, oh, we're, we've got to install something. No, you're just immediately streaming it. Um, you could get rid of any any sort of patches, really. It's just the next time you boot it up, it's there. It's downloaded. It's already installed. Um, I mean, they could really eliminate that kind of of barrier between buying a game and playing it. That's what it would saying, almost right? it could almost be immediate. Yeah, yes. I mean that would that would go a long way, even just for me, because and I'm like I said, that's what. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that that's kind of what's drove me to get a lot of games digitally yes. because I can pre-install them. And so when I'm legally allowed to play, I can just play it. I don't have to worry about going to a store, getting a disc, getting a patch. You know, it's it, it would be great to be able to just play a game as soon as it's released and not have to game. worry about any of this. I expect, like I said, I expect the next PlayStation and the next Xbox to to incorporate streaming to solve and alleviate some of these issues. I believe mm -hmm. on the next Xbox, you'll be able to pre-order a game and stream it the moment it's released while you install it. Um, yeah. I expect it to happen. The, the, the social stuff that they're doing with YouTube and state share and stream share, you know, like you're going to be able to um, queue up. Like, so if you're a streamer, right, if you're a creator and you're using YouTube gaming, you'll be able to have a queue of people watching your stream that have Stadia that they can like sign up. I was already thinking of like, can you imagine the amount of like Patreon tiers that are going to be created for this? Mm -hmm. you know, like five bucks a month and you get to be exclusively in my, you know, my straight, my Stadia queue. Um, so that's cool. Like, you know, partnering streamers with their actual audiences and then, you know, the, the couch co-op thing that they brought up, you know, couch co-op is basically almost dead, you know, Halo, <laughs> infamously said you know we can't run the game twice so that's why there's not couch co-op well with this yeah you're not running anything so you can mm -hmm. literally split any screen in half and just run two instances of the game that's crazy yeah so there's you a lot of things here split screen co-op with your friend across the country and yes. still see what they're seeing you know have it split screen but not be actually next to each other the reason that i think this is a big deal is because again this is something that the others i just don't think can do and it, and it provides you a reason like this is why you pay sixty dollars to stream a game versus downloading it. You know, like that's mm -hmm. the that's the thing. This is the hook. This is why you would do it because you have these features that you don't have somewhere else. That's the exclusive part. Yeah. So um, yeah, I also think having the ability to support basically all devices from the get go, you know, right out of the yeah. gate, is a huge advantage. And uh, if 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 done well, the price, you know, actually having a, a solid price that people that onboarding is going to be huge. Like I think they'll do something mm -hmm. free for a while, but then seeing like how this is going to work, I, I, you know, I, I hate the idea of renting games, but I, I do agree with your point. If they can get it down to like a micro transaction worth of money, you know, like two dollars for for an hour, that's a real easy way to get people in. You know, it's a real easy way yeah. to hook them. Like, hey, I want to play this game click the button two bucks and now you're playing like that's pretty cool so i yeah. think i might i might come around on that one um you know yeah, i never I'm really gonna... go ahead i never really thought about the the rental option i don't know how i feel about that yet i haven't really <laughs> processed because i like it. owning my games like i, I get that yeah. um or at least owning access to my games not necessarily owning it physically or outright but i like i don't want to like i don't like the idea that i pay for a game and it goes away <laughs> mm -hmm. like that i but, haven't really got got up to yet but if it's a subscription model i wouldn't be surprised if it was cheaper than everybody's expecting like yeah. it's not going to be like a hundred dollars a month like i could i could see it down to like game pass level pricing i i could as well Almost. i was going to say um speaking of the youtube and the onboarding and all that built in you know we talked about how google's going to be able to use those tools to get the word out of, you know get, get stadia out to the masses Think about what that could do for actual games. You know, like in my time in PSVG, we have so many developers that they just want you to know that they even have a game available. Mm -hmm. Think about that. If you could, you know, like a new exclusive game, like, hey, uh, bring your game launch first on Stadia and we'll run YouTube ads for a day and we'll show it to millions of people. Yeah, that's got to be, you know, enticing. For somebody yeah you know, like launch assassin's creed give us 24 hours early access on stadia 
you know, the day before release. That's nothing new. You know, like if they do that, you know, EA does that with all their stuff and all that. Give us 24 hour access and we'll run it. You know, we'll run a video every five minutes, just a little ad on every YouTube video that's played. Like they have their mm-hmm. own built in advertising mechanism. <laughs> that's in, that's, I mean, that's, it's, it's a big deal. I, I can't tell you how much of a big deal I think that is. I think it's a huge advantage. And it really, it'll do a lot for the gaming industry and just bringing in new people. Yeah. Um, cause I, there are plenty of people that I know that like gaming and they have internet and they have internet that can stream games, but they can't afford to spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a box. And so I, they I can know stream folks this. That, I wouldn't say they can't afford it, but I definitely know folks that just, they're like, you know, I don't play enough. Like they're more casual. Yeah. In nature. You know, they're like, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna, I can't justify a $500 box. Like I don't mm-hmm. play enough. I don't, you know, like I don't know what the latest games are. And then the games are $60 each. I think there's like a whole, to, to borrow a, a Greg Miller term, a whole rigmarole in gaming, you know, like just the yeah. idea of gaming, you got to buy a box, you got to buy the games, you, you know, the accessories, like it's a, it's a <laughs> constant, you know, you're constantly buying something. The appeal of here's a controller that syncs to your TV and you just get to play. And yeah. you know, like that, that has to have some sort of casual appeal. And I know that, you know, Phil Harrison spoke about that uh, on the, on the podcast with, with uh, Kotaku they asked him, you know, like, how are you going to compete with everyone else? He's like, well, just because we want to win doesn't mean somebody else has to lose. He's like, guys, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there in the world, and yeah. we're hoping we can find new players to play Stadia, and that's good for gaming. And maybe they find us through Nintendo, or maybe somebody finds Nintendo through us. He's like, yeah. but, you know, there's room for all here, and I think that's, you know, worth pointing out that just because, it's- like, for Stadia to succeed doesn't mean Xbox has to fail. They can yeah. absolutely both succeed and coexist. It's almost like a um, a blue ocean approach, mm-hmm. kind of like Nintendo does a lot, but with AAA games. Yep. Yep. <laughs> because you could you could really there's a lot of people who wouldn't be able to use Stadia, but there's a lot of people who would yeah. use Stadia that don't have access to boxes or can't afford them or don't want to invest several hundred dollars into a box. So there's definitely people out there who have internet but don't have anything else who could definitely benefit from this. And as we didn't mention when we were talking about that, I mean, it'll always get better. You will Mm -hmm. have more internet tomorrow than you did today. Like that will always be true. Like it year every year, it will get better. And maybe it takes a while. Maybe it takes five years, 10 years, who knows, but it will, there will be a day where we all do because that's just the nature of, like I said, internet's becoming utility, you know, like 5g, could be huge for Stadia when 5G actually starts to roll out to consumer clients. The idea that you could play, you know, Assassin's Creed on your phone, the day it comes <laughs> out, you just pick up a controller and you open up your phone at work and you're playing. Man, yeah. that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So I mean, I'm I'm excited for it because I get like 30 megabits down at work on my yeah. phone, and I get like 100 megabits down at home. So <laughs> I've I got mean, a, I love. Uh, business client access to comcast i'm a business subscriber yeah. so yeah i have a, I have a dedicated line so i love bizarre. i love my switch and it's probably my favorite console that i've ever owned because i can play it wherever i want mm-hmm. but it is limited in some of the games it has just because of hardware um, limits which i totally understand but now if i can have my switch and my phone and i can just trade off and play any game i want theoretically I'm all in. You know, it's funny. I, I brought this up when Project Stream was was released. We see so many games today based on because of the running on the hardware, especially if you're like on Switch or you're like on base PS4. The dynamic scaling of resolution, like based on the game and the frame rate, like they, they scale down. So like uh, Wolfenstein, for example, on, on, on Switch, it like drops yeah. as far down to like 480 and like <laughs> maybe as high as like 720 at times. Yeah. Um, I, I've often said like, you might as well be streaming the game. <laughs> How is that yeah. any different than streaming the game? Like if your resolution is yeah. going to vary that wildly, why not just stream it? Um, it'd be very interesting. I don't want to go too far down here, but it'd be very interesting to see what Nintendo does. Um, if they partner with Microsoft as has been the rumor, or if they ever allow a Stadia app to run on the switch, because it could really open up you know, that platform to a lot of different, a lot of different games that it, it just can't run or it can run better. Um, you know, 
like the new Doom Eternal. I know people are talking about input lag with the streaming. I'm pretty sure I'd rather play that with some input lag than whatever the native version on Switch is going to be released. Yeah, <laughs> and and we've seen in Japan that uh, Nintendo has allowed certain streaming. Yep. Um, there's an Evil Seven, Assassin's Creed. Yep. Was it Origins or Odyssey? I forget which it's one it Odyssey. was. They have a streaming yeah, version so of Odyssey out there. So I wouldn't be surprised if they allow Google Stadia. They would obviously come to some business agreement. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's the somebody... thing with Microsoft. Somebody's got to give them some money. Yeah, um, they're not just going to be like, oh, yeah, you can play all your games, but we get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting future. Okay. So that's uh, a little over an hour conversation on Google Stadia. The very first episode of the Google Stadia show, the newest show out by the PSVG Podcast Network. Um, I just want to, before we close, I just want to talk about what we see this show becoming. So Jared and I obviously really excited about Google Stadia. We've been talking about it on Discord, we've been sharing all these things, and I was like, man, we should put our thoughts down on podcast form. And he was like, oh, I'd, I'd love to. And we, were gonna, and we are going to release it on PSVG Prime. Um, but I was like, you know what? This is kind of an opportunity that you don't get to see a lot um, as somebody who podcasts to be on the ground floor. I think everybody that podcasts wished they were podcasting five years before they were podcasting. You know, like everybody wishes that they were there earlier because it, like, there's a podcast for everything. Hypocrites. Look at me, Kettle, <laughs> putting out a podcast for this. But I'm really excited about this. And... I really think it could be a big deal uh, in time. So I went ahead and registered the Google Stadia show just to have it. And here's the deal. We're not going to release weekly episodes. We may not release monthly episodes until uh, until there's news to until there's things to say. Like we don't want to talk about it just to talk about it. So the idea that I currently have and uh, Jared and I will have to discuss this further down the line is that as news drops, um, we may do bites. We may do another episode. But as news comes out and updates, significant news, we will take to the to the microphones again and provide those updates here on the Google Stadia show. And then at Google I.O. or E3, whenever they, they unveil the news, we will come back here and do another long-form discussion. And then when it launches, maybe... Maybe we, we do monthly shows or bi-weekly shows or something like that and actually give you some Google Stadia updates and start incorporating some of the other PSVG team and stuff out there. So um, if you really like our show, ratings and reviews, that helps everybody find us. If you're excited for Google Stadia, let us know. Um, hit the Twitter, at StadiaPod. Went ahead and grab that too. So like I said, uh, I was on, honestly almost equally excited to be on the ground floor of something kind of in a podcast way. Because, man, I tell you, you're trying to start a podcast with a Nintendo related like topic. <laughs> Ooh, good luck. Many. You and 8,000 other people. <laughs> I'm sure every version of like, you could go to a name generator and every version of Nintendo. Something is already a podcast. <laughs> There's the Nintendo Island, the shack, the, the building, the Coliseum. I'm surprised nobody's done Nintendo stadia. Like it's just going to be a thing. So, um, yeah. So I just want to provide a little update on kind of where we see this show going. And, um, hopefully, hopefully it's, hopefully it's something that we want to record. That's, so that's the hope, right? Cause if it's not, it yeah. means it's bad. And we, we just, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hopefully it's something we really hopefully it's like a good enough product that we, we want to continue to talk about we it. We take to the <laughs> airwaves. Absolutely. So, uh, Jared, before we uh, call it, before we bid farewell, is there anything else you'd like to, to say? You want to plug your, your Twitter or anything? Um, sure. Uh, my Twitter is at Highly Intelligent. It's such a uh, good Hylian, Twitter handle, by the way. It's so <laughs> Hylian, good. like like Zelda, and then Intelligent, like it's supposed to be spelled. I can imagine the thousands of people that thought that they were they were quick, and then they saw that you already grabbed it, and they're like, damn it! <laughs> uh, honestly, I only thought about it, like, I came up with it like maybe a year ago and I was surprised that nobody had it. <laughs> yeah, so am I. I think it's just so long that nobody wants to have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you can follow me on there. Um, you'll see me in the PSVG Discord also talking about Stadia. Um, other than that, if you need a graphic or YouTube intro, yeah, man. come talk to me. Get that biz. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Subscription plan? Do you have a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah ten dollars a month and i'll make you a, a youtube intro nice it's not bad <laughs> all right well that with that listeners we'll see you next time um like i said google io is in may e3 is in june it's currently april who knows 
maybe maybe we'll get something or it's it's march but it's almost april right what what is what is the date it's like march the 24th 4th yeah 24th. So we're a few days yeah. away from april so yeah we'll see we have should have news coming anyway mm-hmm. thanks for listening folks 